Okay, so what I wanna do now is introduce you to infrastructure as code. And so we're gonna take a look at CloudFormation. And so we were just using Cloud9 for the SDK. So we're gonna go back and create ourselves a new Cloud9 environment because we do have to write uh, some code. So I'll go ahead and hit create here. And I'm gonna just say uh, CFN, that's short for CloudFormation example. And we'll hit next step. And we'll create ourselves a new environment, T2 micro. Uh, Amazon X2 is totally fine. We'll hit next. It will delete after 30 minutes. We'll be fine. We're within the free tier. We're going to give this a moment to load up. Um, and remember, you can set your theme, your your keyboard mode, whatever you want as that loads. And as that's going, we're going to look up CloudFormation. And so CloudFormation is very intimidating at first, but once you get through the motions of it, it's not too bad. Um, so we'll go to the user guide here, as we always do. If you go to the getting started, it's gonna just tell us some things. It's gonna read about YAML files. Um, I don't think I really need to read much about this here. So I think we'll just go start looking up some code. So something that might be interesting to launch is an EC2 instance, CloudFormation. So that's what I'll do is I'll type in what I want. So an EC2 instance, and I'll just start pasting in code. So if we scroll on down below here, I'm gonna to go to examples, cause I want a small example here. This is something that I might want to do. And we're gonna give that a moment here. It's almost done. You can do it, AWS, come on. As that is going, I'm gonna open a new tab. I'm gonna make my way over to CloudFormation. Okay. And um, you can see I have some older stacks here. Notice uh, Cloud9, when we create an environment, it actually creates a CloudFormation stack, which is kind of interesting. Um, but if we go here, we can create a stack and we can create a file and upload it here. So, okay, this is good. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new file. We're gonna call it template.yaml. Um, just so you know, YAML can be YML or YAML. There's a big debate as to which one you use. Um, I think that AWS likes it when you use the full version. So I just stick with YAML. I'm gonna double click into that. And so in this EC2 example, I'm just gonna copy this, okay? And I'm gonna paste this in here. And I'm gonna type in uh, resources, oops, capital. Okay, so that's a resource I want to create. Um, when you create CloudFormation, you always have a template version. So I just need a basic example here at the top. I guess that's a simple one is like a hello world bucket. Maybe we should do a bucket because it'll be a lot easier. We don't have to make our lives super hard here. Okay. Um, but what I'm looking for is the version because that's the first thing that you specify. I'm just trying to find it within an example here. Oh, for quick sakes, cloud formation version. So if I don't have the format version, it's going to complain. There it is. Okay, so we'll copy that. We'll go back over here. We'll paste that in there. It might be fun to do like an output here. So I'm gonna do like an output, outputs. And uh, maybe instead of doing this, we'll type in AWS S3 CloudFormation. Because what I'm looking for is what we can set as output. So we'll say return values here. Um, maybe we just want returns the domain name. So we'll just say um, value ref that that's going to get the reference for it, and we have to say hello bucket uh, type string. I'll say outputs. CloudFormation example. And even though I've written tons of CloudFormation, it's just like, if you're not doing it on day in, day out, you start to forget what it is. So here for outputs, we need a logical ID, description, value, and export. So um, that is what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that back here. This is just so that when we run it, we're gonna be able to observe an output from the CloudFormation file. Okay, so the logical ID is whatever we want. So hello bucket domain. It's funny because this is how you do do um, kind of, that'd be the format for Terraform. I was getting them mixed up. So the domain of the bucket, 
the value here is going to be ref hello bucket domain name. That's the output export value to export. Uh, can I get an example here? Else name. Oh, you know what? Export is for uh, cross stacks. We don't need to do that. Okay, so that's fine. So what we'll do is set that and we'll take out our old one. And so this should create us an S3 bucket. So with CloudFormation, you can uh, provide a template here by providing a URL or you can upload a file directly. So um, I'm just trying to decide here how I want to do this. You can also use a sample file or create a template in the designer. I'm gonna go over to the designer because then we can just like paste in what we want. So if I go over to YAML here and we go back over here, I copy this. I'm just going to paste this in here. And we're gonna hit the refresh button. Nobody ever uses the designer, but this is just kind of an easy example for me to uh, place this in here. It's not really working. Maybe I gotta go to template dude here. Refresh. There we go. So there's our bucket. It's nice to have a little visualization. And I believe this is going to work as expected. So now that we have our designer template, I think if we hit close, what's this button say? Validate template, probably a good idea, validating the template. Template contains errors, unresolved resource dependency in the output block of the template. Hello, domain bucket. Seems like it should be fine. Let's go, whoops. Let's go back over here. That's what I did, I said reference that value. Oh, uh, maybe it's get a trib, okay. It's get att, sorry. Get a trib, cloud formation. Can't remember if there's an R on the end of it. Oh, it's just att. This is if you're trying to get a return intrinsic value, so a reference is like what the default one is, but every time we do like a logical name and attribute, that's how we get that there. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is just hit refresh and I'm going to validate that one more time. Now it's valid. If I hover over this, is it going to upload it? Create the stack. We could save this, save it. Oh, we can save it in S3 bucket. So we'll say hello bucket. And so now we have this URL, so I'm going to copy it. Honestly, I never use this editor, so it's kind of interesting. I'm going to leave. And we probably could have hit create stack, but I just find it a bit easier if we just kind of do it through uh, this here. So go back, create the stack. We're going to paste in the URL. We're going to say next. And we're going to say uh, my new stack. And I didn't see what the name of the bucket was. Oh, there's no name, so it's going to randomize. That's perfect. So we'll go next. We have a bunch of options here. We'll hit, hit next. We'll give it a moment here. Oh, I guess we have to review it, create the stack. And this is the part where we watch. So it says create in progress and we wait and we hit refresh. And we can see what's happening. It's trying to create a bucket. And if we go to resources, this is, this is a lot easier to track because you can see all the resources that are being created. If you notice that when you use the CL, uh, when you're using the Abus management console to create an S3 bucket, it's instantaneous. But like with CloudFormation, there's a bit of a delay because there's some communication going on board. But here it is. And notice that we go to our outputs. This is the the value of the bucket domain name. If we were to make it with uh, self-hosting, which is not what we're doing with it, we could also have an export name, which would be used for cross-referencing stacks, which is not something we uh, care to do. Um, but yeah, that's how you create a stack that way. Um, but you know, we can also do it via the SDK here. So what I can do um, is look up what is the AWS uh, CLI CloudFormation because they have their own commands here. If I go here, there's a new one and there's an old one. So if we go create stack, yeah, there's things like this, like create stack update. Um, so if we wanted to do it this way, Okay, and I copied this here. 
going to put this in my readme here for a second. Uh, so here what you do is you say my new stack and you can provide the template URL or you could specify the local path here. So we have like a template body. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Okay. This would be like YAML. And um, I need to specify this file here. So template.yaml. And I'm just going to go PWD here to get the full path. Okay. And then I'm going to just paste that in there. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to do ls. Okay, so that gives us the full path to the file. We can also specify the template URL. Um, and so this should work as well if I take this and paste that on as a command. Unable to locate parameter file. Oh, there's three, tr tr three triple slashes there. We'll just fix that there. Paste. Unable to load param file, no such file or directory, and there's a T missing. Okay. Be like, uh, don't be like me and make sure you don't have <laughs> spelling mistakes, okay? I can type clear down here so I can see what I'm doing. We'll hit enter, whoops. Unable to load the parameter file, no such file or directory. Oh. Home, well, I you didn't want the forward slash. So another thing we can try to do, I think it will take it relative. So if I do this, it should work. I don't ever remember having to specify the entire path. An error occurred while calling the create stack. My new stack name already exists. If I go back over here, give this a refresh. Oh, that's what we named our stack, the, the one that we did. So I'm gonna say stack two, okay. Template format, unsupported structure when calling the create stack operation. Are you kidding me? I do this all the time. Template body, YAML file, cloud formation. Unsupported structure. Take a look here. Oh, you know what? I think uh, this one's out of date, that's why. So what we can do is go to our old stack here and we can actually see the template. I can go ahead and copy this, whoops. And we can go ahead and paste that in there. And then now what I can do, so, you know, that's that's the reason why it wasn't working. Okay, so we'll hit enter. Um, unsupported structure. It should be supported. Let's see if CloudFormation can help us out. Um, apparently there was very unhelpful error message formatting. So try the validate template option. I wonder if we could just do this. Maybe if that would help here. I'm just hitting up to try to run it again. Nope, I guess we can try to validate it here. It's like, I'm not having much luck here today. So we'll just say this here. Maybe it's not even loading that file where it is, eh? So there's no errors. I'm just gonna make this one line. Okay, created. So for whatever reason, I must've had a, a bug there. And so putting, sometimes putting on one line helps that out because I must've had an obvious mistake there. And now we can see the stack is creating, it's doing the exact same thing. It's creating uh, a different bucket though. If we go over to our S3 here, Again, you know, you don't need to be able to do this yourself to pass the exam. It's just so I'm just trying to show you like what it is. So you kind of absorb any kind of knowledge about what's going on here. Notice down below, it uses the stack name followed by uh, the re the logical name of the resource there. Okay. Um, and what we'll do is wait for that to create. Once that's created, we can go ahead and delete these stacks. We could also use the AWS CloudFormation to say like delete stack, but I don't want to uh, bore you with that today. And so we'll hit refresh here, wait for those stacks to vanish. Okay, those are gone. Uh, what I'm gonna do is kill this Cloud9 environment. Uh, if there's a way to do it from here, I have never known how to do it. Go back to your dashboard. Well, that's nice to know. And we'll go ahead and just delete this. Okay, we'll close that tab. And so now we are all in good shape. And so that was our introduction to CloudFormation, okay?